I'm Jack Parker with Parker Cornea, and most of these videos on this channel are surgical how-tos for complicated operations, especially corneal transplants. This video is different. This is something totally entirely separate. Um, I'm scheduled to give a talk at our big meeting, the American Academy of Ophthalmology, next month in Orlando, and the subject of that talk is the diagnosis and management of acanthamoeba keratitis. So I thought here we'd do a little preview of that talk for what we plan on discussing a month from now. So acanthamoeba keratitis, classically it looks like this. You've got a red hot painful excruciating eyeball with a ring infiltrate and everybody's familiar with this image of an eye. However, the problem is lots of acanthamoeba doesn't look like that. This is an eye that's got acanthamoeba with just this epithelial opacity faintly visible. This is an eye with acanthamoeba that has these multifocal corneal infiltrates. And so the issue immediately apparent is you cannot adequately diagnose acanthamoeba just at the slit lamp because the presentation is so varied. So what options do you have if you suspect some weird non-specific corneal problem? Well, classically, lots of people think about, well, what about confocal microscopy? Can you look for the oozoites in the corneal stroma? Well, yes, if you have access to a confocal micro microscope, but you probably don't because no one has any of these things except for an academic medical center because they're super expensive. They're not reimbursed by anybody's health insurance. They take considerable technical skill to operate. So nobody's got a confocal microscope. Uh, well, what else could you do? Well, you could culture the eye. You could look for the, uh, the, uh, the trophozoites on culture. But the problem is the culture is not that easy to do. This is what's required to culture an eye. You need non-nutrient agar plates. You need a heavy slurry of enterobacter. You need Bartels, clans, tram, media. So it's a complicated list of weird ingredients and consequently nobody really is doing cultures for acanthamoeba. So here's the second problem is the clinical exam at the slit lamp is unreliable and the ancillary test you use to confirm suspicion, the confocal microscope and the culture medium, they're inconvenient. So wouldn't it be nice if there was a reliable, convenient way to diagnose acanth amoeba and as some kind of mystical, magical bonus, wouldn't it also be great if that way of diagnosing uh, acanth amoeba was also a treatment. Well, guess what? Good news is there is such a thing. And that thing was taught to me by my dad, actually. My father is my partner at Parker Cornea. He's my hero. And when I joined him, he just sort of casually mentioned this to me, that Boston Conditioning Solution, which is available over the counter for $9 here online from Walmart. You can buy without a prescription from a doctor. It's a hard contact lens cleaning solution. And Boston Conditioning Solution contains as its ingredients, number one, chlorhexidine. That's the primary ingredient. And number two, polyaminopropyl uh, polyamino biguanide. So you've heard of PHMB as a treatment for acanthamoeba. Well, this is a relative cousin of PHMB. It's another biguanide. So this drop, what we tell patients to do, if we suspect acanthamoeba, we tell them to use this drop every hour while awake and come back tomorrow. And if it's acanthamoeba, the patient will be feeling better and looking better tomorrow. So this is a very easy, convenient, reliable, cheap diagnostic tool to detect whether you're dealing with acanthamoeba. And best of all, it's also therapeutic. You can continue patients on this hard contact lens cleaning solution, one drop every hour while awake to a cure. So this has been one of the major things that we do in our practice for the diagnosis and treatment of acanthamoeba. If this is interesting, if you want to know more, consider coming to see us if you're an ophthalmologist in Orlando at our meeting at the Academy. Thanks so much for watching.